video I'm going to be doing here tonight. Uh, this one is a disassembly, reassembly video. We're going to be modifying a couple of knives here. Uh, what we're going to be working with is the Benchmade Mini Crooked River and the Spyderco Techno 2. Uh, now what you see here in front of you is an assortment of, of knives and you may notice that they've been modified and they've all been modified with Flytanium scales. So I've got a Spyderco Manix 2 here, a Benchmade 940. Both of these have copper. I've got titanium on my Benchmade 32 and 51, and then I have brass and copper on a pair of Benchmade propers here. Uh, we're going to be putting copper scales on the Mini Crooked River and the Spyderco Techno 2. These have just been released, I think just last week, um, and as soon as I saw them, I ordered them. Um, and they also came, they were in a deal for the holidays where if you spent uh, over, I think it was $80, 75 or 80 bucks on scales, then they sent you a free pair of uh, their titanium dice as well, which I didn't need. I probably never would have purchased, but uh, they came free with it. So I think they're like $35. And then this little thing here, this is also made by Flytanium. It's a little copper, um, I guess a fidget toy. It's a copper cube that's been machined within this copper um, cage. So that's kind of neat. Just something that I picked up with some eBay bucks. But anyway, the real focus of this one, I just kind of wanted to give a little display of some of their products because I just I love the stuff they do. They they really, um, you know, they they found a little niche in the knife market. I think they know a lot of people like to customize their stuff. Brass and copper are huge. A lot of people prefer titanium, as I do, to like the G10 on these Bali songs uh, or Valley songs, however you say that. But anyway, we're going to be focused on the Mini Crooked River and the Techno 2. So right now. I'm going to go ahead and move this other stuff out of the way. Those two, just in case I need that space. Um, so these are the new copper of both of them. You can see it's a nice, uh, bright, shiny copper. They come in these sealed bags. Um, hopefully not to get any corrosion or anything on them. But... Um, that's part of the fun of owning these copper pieces, especially you can take a look at this 940 compare. I've carried this one a lot since I put the copper scales on and you can see the difference between new copper and you can kind of see the edges where it keeps the uh, patina kind of worn away. So a little bit, I'm going to ramble through this video. I'm going to warn you right now. Um, a little bit of information here. So I had a bench. I really love the Benchmade Crooked River. I love the form of the knife. It's just, it's a beautiful blend of like traditional and modern um, design, I think. And I owned a full size for a long time. And just a few weeks ago, I sold it because it, it was just too big. I didn't enjoy that knife all that much. And I loved the mini Crooked River, or I really wanted one. But I wasn't willing to buy it because I did not want these wood scales. The full size, in case you didn't know, was available with both these um, Dyna wood or whatever they call this scale material or G10. I had the G10 full size. This one only came in the wood. And there are a lot of reports of like the wood cracking, chipping in the back and, and chunks being broken off. And I could definitely see that. And I just I didn't want that. So I didn't even own this knife. I saw that Flytanium had released the copper kit for it, copper, brass and carbon fiber. Um, and so I bought the kit and then I actually had some Cabela's points, which are also good at Bass Pro Shop. So here in Colorado Springs, I went up to Bass Pro. They had a few of these in stock. So I actually ended up getting a great deal on this with their holiday thing. Um, it was $30 off. So I ended up getting the knife new for like 160, 170 bucks. And then I had Cabela's points anyway, so I got it for free. Um, but all the discounts I had knocked that off. So yeah, the Mini Crooked River is a this is a neat knife. Um, it's, it's really a great size. I have medium sized hands and this is really just a nice EDC size. I can't wait to get the copper on it and check it out. Um, so the copper is going to replace the wood, the orange parts, both the G10 backspacer and the um, collar around the pivot. So that's just a bunch of rambling about the uh, uh, Crooked River, the Benchmade Mini Crooked River. And you'll notice also, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to ramble through this video. Um, the pocket clip on this, this is their black oxide pocket clip. And you can see like it looks pretty worn even from the factory. Because I, I do videos when I sell my knives and I always have to point that out. You know, hey, this is not wear from use. This is how they come from the factory. So this is a brand new knife straight out of the box. Um, so we're going to be doing that one. And then we'll talk about the Techno 2 a little bit here. Um, I am not an enormous Spyderco fan. Um, 
I like a lot of their designs. It's just, there's something about them. Like I, I own several Spider Co's, and I actually over the past couple of weeks I've actually sold quite a few of my Spider Co's. But this knife right here, the Tech, and I have a Techno One as well. The Techno Two to me is a great EDC knife. I really, really love this knife. I've got the Rips Garage Tech, um, a Rips Garage Tech. They come in different uh, forms. They can get them contoured or flat and different anodizations and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I, I really hate the wire clip that comes on these, and I really think this clip makes this knife. It's really awesome. And I wasn't really looking to put copper or brass on this, but I'm such a huge fan of copper and brass for the items that I carry. When I saw this on there, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to get that and try it out. And, and the scale is actually really well priced. Uh, it's only 34 bucks. I think that's pretty well priced. Anyway, some people may not. Uh, but we're going to be swapping that copper out on here. Um, so I figured I'd, I'd buy that and, and put it on there and, and make this knife even better, probably. Uh, though the Techno 2, I really think, is an awesome uh, EDC knife. Now, I have never disassembled either one of these. Um, as you can see with the 940, I have disassembled an axis lock before. and that's I've actually disassembled other axis locks, but we'll see how this goes. I think I have everything I need. I've got my WIA kit. Make sure if you're doing work on your nice knives, you get a nice set of... Uh, tools with good hardened steel bits so you're not stripping your screws or at least reduce the chances of it. I got a little bit of black tea with some 1792 small batch whiskey in it. And I'm going to take a quick swig of that. Helps ease the throat as I ramble through these videos. So anyway, um, I am going to start, I think, with the Techno 2 because that should be a lot easier um, to do. Uh, than the than the Crooked River because there will be a lot less parts to deal with. So I'll get my driver out here. I'm not even sure uh, what size Torx I need on these. Maybe I should check that kind of stuff before I start the video, but oh well. Um, I can edit if it gets too crazy long. Nope, T10 is too big. T9 is too big. I figured it would be. That's not, T9 is not very common. It's usually one of the even numbers. There we go. A T8 is what you need for the pivot on your Techno 2, and I'm imagining they used T8 on all of them. They did. So those are all T8 uh, Torx. So let's go ahead. And what I do when I disassemble my frame locks is I open them, and then I take tension off. I push this over where it would be if the knife is at rest, so the, there's no tension like uh, on the knife. So I'm going to go ahead and see what we've got here. That seemed to come loose pretty easily. Whoops. Spyderco used to put a red Loctite on their fasteners, and we can obviously see that they have used a thread locking chemical on there. It looks like blue Loctite they put in there. But they used to put that red stuff, and the red stuff is um, it's semi-permanent. You usually have to heat that stuff up to get it loose. That one pop free, this one pop free very easily. Same thing there, we've got some thread lock in there. And I'm not doing these in any particular order, I just kind of started. Uh, my Techno 2 pivot does come loose a little bit. I'll notice it starts to develop a little bit of side to side play over time. Um, I prefer not to lock tight my stuff if I can avoid it, and I don't do it with this one. And as you can see, the pivot here actually doesn't, it's weird. They put a bunch of lock uh, thread locker on the frame, on the standoff screws, the pillar screws, but not much on the pivot. Hmm. I, I like to try and keep my stuff in order too, in case you haven't noticed. Like I'll, I like to put stuff back where it went. Um, I don't think in most cases it really matters, but it's just a quirk. I like. So now we're gonna see if this scale will pop off here. Yep, pops right off. I would say, I've never had this knife apart. I would say it looks like they, they polished that. Um, on, on the scale there. That's kind of nice, uh, where, where the washer would move around. Um, and I've always liked the action stuff on this knife. I'm really not even gonna mess with it. I'm not gonna clean it up or anything. I'm, I'm just gonna open it up and, uh, I guess I should've cut these guys open. Let's use, eh, let's use this little Benchmade 32. This is such a neat knife. I love it with these titanium scales. It's just a beautiful little knife. Um, sorry, maybe a little bit of screen time. I think it looks awesome with the blue anodized titanium underneath of there. Um, I should really carry this knife more. It, this is just such a fantastic little EDC. Uh, if you like butterfly knives, um, 
this is just a beautiful knife. So pull out the copper scale here and uh, the flitanium stuff. They always send a little sticker of some kind. They have different stickers. Um, I don't know what this one came with. Same sticker on that one. They do have different types of stickers. Anyway, here is the scale. Not really much to it. It's just a slab of type or a slab of uh, copper. They've machined some holes and some uh, counter bores, and then a place for your pocket clip. I almost wish they hadn't done that. I know it's nice to have ambidextry and uh, ambidextrous stuff, but uh, you know that this would have been, in my opinion, much more beautiful without that going on there. Yeah, whatever. And I actually think a lot of people don't like these green pillars, but um, I actually think this is going to look pretty neat with the copper. Um, I, I do like that. In fact, I think, oh no, um, this was this was a Benchmade uh, 940, not a 940 Tac 2, which also has the green standoffs. That's my other 940, which wears rock scale, design scales. That one has green standoffs. So anyway, let's try and minimize the rambling. So I'm just going to, I'm keeping tension off this frame lock. Um, so I'm trying to get this guy lined up without the knife fighting me. And that slipped right on there. Absolutely no issues. Um, that's really nice. I didn't fight it or anything. Not that, I mean, just lining up the posts with three holes here. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, it just slipped right on there. So yeah. So I'm going to continue to keep tension pushing down on this frame lock so it's not pushing the blade, which can then throw things out of whack. And I'm going to get my screws on here. Once again, I'm not really doing these in any particular order. And to start off, I am I'm just going to um, get them not even, I'm going to take them snug and then back them off a little bit um, so that I can tighten them in a good sequence to try and, you know, if I need to get the blade centered or anything. What I typically do when I go to retighten screws, um, I will typically um, do this middle one first. If, if there are three or one, like if there are four, like... Um, I'll try and do some in the middle first and then do the ends. I, I don't really know why. I think I maybe read that somewhere that it, you can get your blade centered more easily if you do them in that. And then I, you know, I'll do the pivot last. Um, so they're all snug now. I'm going to back them off just a little bit and see what we've got going on. Yeah, there's plenty of blade play there. So actually right now, since, since all the screws are on and everything, I'm going to go ahead and, and snug them. Uh, so let's start with the middle one here. And notice I'm just taking two fingers and a thumb is all I'm doing. I'm not gripping it, you know, like a motorcycle throttle or something and really cranking on it or anything. I'm just taking those three fingers. That's really all you need. You don't need to, you know, you don't want to risk stripping anything. And, you know, if you do that with these three fingers, the thumb and the two fingers, it, it's, that's what I do on all my knives, my Chris Reeves, my hinderers, my everything I, I do this. Um, so... You know, you just don't need to crank. And on the pivot, of course, we'll have to adjust it so that we get um, a minimum. I, I tend to adjust mine a little bit tighter. Um, I don't need my blades to fly out. I prefer to eliminate as much blade play as I can and still have them come out easily. Um, that's just a little bit of glue or uh, tape right from where I cut a box open or something that's on the blade there. So right now I have just the tiniest amount Side to side, so I'm gonna do that a little bit more. I've still got lots of very smooth there. There we go. A little bit. I like to feel a little bit of resistance um, on the blade as I as I move it. I don't I don't like it to be flopping in and out. I like you know even if I have a choice like on my hinderers. Um, that will have a flipper or thumb studs, like on my XM18s and stuff. I prefer to open it with the thumb studs, the blade stops. Um, so right now, this is really nice. This is right where I want it. There's no blade play, and um, it has some resistance as I go to open it just a little bit. I'm going to see. Just a slight bit more. Yeah. That's how I like my knives. You adjust them how you like. There we go. Very solid. No blade play. And 
a real, it's still very smooth, but it's a little bit of resistance. You know, I don't wrist flip my knives open and stuff like that. So anyway, that's all there is to it. I just installed the Flytanium Copper Scale on this uh, Spyderco Techno 2. We'll kind of take a look around it here. Um, it's, it's, a, it's quite a contrast right now. Um, but it will, uh, this will patina the copper and start to darken. So let's take a look at some different stages. So this knife I've carried extensively in my pocket. This one has been carried um, extensively. So this is in like a pants pocket, which tends to get as as your thighs and stuff get warm, it'll it'll make it'll create some moisture in your pocket. So this one patinaed pretty quickly. Uh, this one was carried maybe in a shirt pocket or in an EDC bag. So it took a little while, but it actually looks very similar uh, to those. And then let's let me go ahead and close this before I end up cutting myself. And here I have not carried this one at all since I put this since I put the uh, copper scales on this uh, Spyderco Manix Two, um, and you can see that they it still retains some of its shiny uh, shininess. This has just been, just been sitting in a storage case. I store most of my knives in Pelican cases, and that's where this one's been sitting. It also has the flytanium uh, titanium ball cage on there, which is really nice. It's a neat knife. I love the Manix too. Um, it's one of my favorite spider codes. Anyway, that's just to show some different stages of the patina. So hopefully this one will get this going because I'm going to carry this guy quite a bit, I'm sure. And I'll also be taking this lanyard and putting it on here probably or make another lanyard for it. Um, but there we go. I mean, that's all there was to that. Of course, it, it took longer because I was rambling and trying to show some stuff on there, but I like it. Um, I really think this is going to look neat. Once uh, the patina starts coming in, I'd love to see some of that shininess go away from the from the milled out areas for the clip um, and, and really get that patina. That's probably going to be difficult, though, because the patina tends to um, uh, materialize more where you touch it. So it, it may not patina down there very readily. I'm not sure. We'll just have to see how that goes. But yeah, I like it with the green standoffs. I like the contrast on the two sides now. Yeah, this fellow's gonna is gonna see some carry. It already does, but it trades pocket time with my Chris Reeves and my Hinderers. Um, this one tends to uh, it tends to be one of those three brands in my pockets anymore. So yeah, I think we have. Covered this one pretty thoroughly, and I'm very pleased with that. I think that's really neat. Uh, Flytanium, as, as usual, does a good job. Uh, it fits really well. Uh, I like it. Good stuff. So I'm going to set this one in the back with the other group of uh, completed Flytanium stuff. And now we're going to look at the Crooked River. All right. Excited for this one. I think this is going to be awesome. I saw one other guy on some of the Facebook groups who had done brass on his and I was, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I wanted to do this uh, yesterday, and I couldn't. So this knife is, I got this on Monday night. This is Wednesday, so uh, I've been itching to really get this done. But I wanted to do a video, um, so I couldn't I couldn't really do it during the day or anything. So let's go ahead and get to this. Um, this one will be a little more complicated because um, frame locks are pretty darn simple. Thank you, Chris Reeve, um, who invented the frame lock, in case you didn't know. And just lets anybody else use it without any licensing or anything. Uh, very simple knives. I mean, you've got very few parts here. You saw it when we took it apart. This is the exact opposite. This knife has lots of little parts and such. Um, but honestly, we may not have to really get too far into that. Um, I don't. We're not gonna really have to disassemble any of the axis stuff in here. So let's just get into it. Let's see what we're dealing with. Um, like I said, I have not done this, so you are seeing this live. Uh, well, obviously it's not live, live, but, um, you know, I may make some mistakes here. Oh, um, I automatically grabbed a T6 because I know that's what Benchmade uses for their clip screws. Because I have removed a lot of Benchmade clips, swapped them around, put new ones on, all that kind of stuff. And real quick, before I go much further, I'm going to get another drink here. I don't know whether it's the hot tea or the whiskey that helps my throat, but uh, I don't want to know. I'm just going to keep mixing them. So what I'm doing, I'm just loosening these um, 
so I can lift them all off at once with the clip and set that guy aside. I will probably uh, look into getting, I have some custom, there's there's a guy on uh, eBay that makes some, and there's all kinds of people that make custom clips. Uh, so I'll probably end up putting a different clip on there because when I saw the one on the brass, I didn't really like it all that much um, that the other guy had done, but we'll see. That That's in the future. Right now, let's just get these copper scales on and that may be, let's see, those appear to be T6s as well. Awesome. They are coming loose readily. Set those guys aside here. Actually, I'm gonna set this as they would be on the knife because like I said, I'm really anal about that for no good reason whatsoever. Uh, we live in the age of interchangeable parts. Thank you, Eli Whitney, I think. Was that Eli Whitney? Yeah, I don't remember, I think. So anyway, God, I am rambling like crazy in this one. I guess I'm just excited to get these done. So here we've removed the uh, the male screws. The other side, those are uh, female screws that just go straight through. Um, and I think now we should just be able to lift off. Yep, so there's our first uh, dyna wood or whatever Benjamin calls this, our first scale there, a wood scale, lifted right off of there. And I'm just gonna set this aside. It's gonna go back in the box. Um, so for the other side, you know what? I should have done two. Let's use our newly modified Techno to open this one. And I gotta admit, I, I love orange. I'm a little bit on the fence about replacing the orange parts on this one. Um, I don't know. I think I'm gonna do the backspacer. Let's see about the pivot colors though. I don't know. I may leave that orange on there. I may go ahead and cut the bag open for them, but I may just end up keeping that orange on there because I like orange. I know a lot of people complained about that with the Crooked River. Oh, this hideous orange. And I was like, oh, I don't like the orange. Thank you, Techno2. You look good while doing that. Set those off to the side. Man, now if you don't, hopefully you know this, copper is a very dense metal. So if you add copper, when you add copper to any of these, say this 940, this 940 had aluminum scales from the factory and it uh, it was very lightweight. You put this copper on here, you are gonna notice the difference, I promise you. Very heavy, uh, but I love it. I like the weight um, and I love the way that it patinas and stuff. So anyway, I am gonna go ahead, let me get this techno scale out of here. I am gonna go ahead and replace the backspacer. I do want that to be um, copper. I'm gonna point out a couple things that I really like here while I've got this knife open. Take a look at these, at these screws. Notice that they are circular, but one area of them is flat. I love this. I, mean, I didn't look at this on the Techno 2, but I know my Techno 1 had it. The same thing, I really wish that like Chris Reeve and Hinderer would do this as well, because then it keeps one side of the screw captured. Um, so the, the two don't turn together. That is one thing, I love my Hinderers, they're my favorite knives, because in case you can't tell, I love customizing knives. I love to make them my own, get aftermarket parts. And Hinderer is awesome for that, because they do all that stuff with factory parts, it's great. Um, you never, never have to worry about fitment or stuff. Now, availability can be an issue, I'm not gonna lie, um, with some of their stuff. But Hinderer with their, they have very similar uh, nuts to these. One of them is a female just like this and it's, it only has a fastener on the male side. And if, if anybody Loctites those or anything, they spin together, you're kind of screwed. Um, unless you can break it apart with heat or something, it's a really big pain in the butt. So my whole point here is this is really nice to have this flat spot here so that if somebody did Loctite it or something, this one is not gonna spin and hopefully you can break it free. Anyway, um, I'm gonna continue with this. I'm just gonna take this and poke out the female ones really quickly. I know the camera's going out of focus and stuff. I don't know, I always have to poke the camera or the phone, I'm doing this on my iPhone, to get that to focus back on. So we're gonna remove, now that those female uh, sides are out, I can remove that. Should be able to remove my, um, backspacer here. And this is all pretty well held intact still um, because the, the pivot's still tight. We've got this, oh, I'm not even on camera here. This is still a, a solid and like, not solid, but a functional knife. 
Um, you know, the liners are still there, the pivot is still in place, and the uh, stop pin is still there. So, I mean, I wouldn't carry and use the knife like this, but it's still, like right now, it's still solid. So this has been very easy so far. So right now, I'm going to go ahead. Basically, we're going to kind of, if I decide to do the collar, uh, the pivot collar, that'll be a whole separate thing. We can get this thing back together right now. So I'm going to go ahead and open this, even though I don't like to do this because the blade's exposed, but I just don't want to risk, like, um, dinging up the edge or anything. We're going to talk about that. Actually, real quick, I want to talk about that. Benchmade, you will hear um, a lot of QC complaints with Benchmade. You'll hear a lot of complaints about their edges, how the grinds are uneven. One side will be wider on the second. So this is your primary bevel. This is your secondary bevel, uh, which is your actual edge. And you'll hear a lot of people complain that there is not symmetry on the secondary bevel. One side will be wider than the other. Um, I would say this one's pretty symmetric as far as the bevels go. Uh, usually you can see it here. One of them will come way further back. But I examined, they had three or two of these in stock at Bass Pro, and I examined two of them, and or both of them, I'm sorry. And I chose this one. Both of them were pretty gnarly, though. Like, there's something, like, this should round up to the tip, and there's some kind of, like, flatness going on here or something. You can see the grinds are not very pretty. They're very, I mean, you can tell this was, like, done on a belt, and it was not a very fine grit. Um, I don't know. It's it's sharp. Don't get me wrong. This sucker is freaking sharp. But it's just not a very pretty edge. Um, and that's, that is what it is. Um, I guess it's really not that big of a deal. But it's something I just kind of wanted to point out. Um, that, that I did notice the edges, even on this brand new knife, they weren't really that pretty. Um, and I, I chose this one because the other one had like a flatter. Um, and when I say flat, I'm not talking the edge was still sharp. It was like... Instead of sweeping, though, curving, it just kind of came straight down, and it was weird to me. Uh, this one wasn't quite as bad. So anyway, let us proceed with this install. Okay. Now this guy... Let me get him kind of in place. And then get my female... Stuff here. Now the one thing you gotta watch with these D-shaped, and here let's I'm gonna put this down real quick so we can just take a look at this uh female side. So you can readily see here there are actually two flat sides on this. So you got a flat side here, a flat side there, and then it's rounded. And I think the hole is it flat on both sides? The hole is only flat on one side. So that's actually kind of nice. Um because as you're, you have to rotate it to get the flat spot in place. Well, now you have two spots to hit that. I don't think that, I think other ones I've disassembled was only flat on one side. So you have to rotate it more to try and get it um, in place. So right now I can see my knife. So I'm sorry, I, I like look around the camera while I'm doing this. I don't look, look on the screen of the iPhone. Um, so it may go out of focus and I'll try and catch that as soon as I can and get it back in focus. I apologize for that. Um... And like I said, you're seeing this, you know, as I'm doing it for the first time. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate this out a little bit. And I'm having trouble finding, getting this female. There we go. There we go. Had to use a little bit of force to pop it through the copper. There. Oh, and there she went straight through. And you know what? I'm a dumbass. You're probably sitting there going, uh, hey, I think you're forgetting something there, guy. Yeah. Let's get our scale on there, maybe. Now we got, so this hole is perfectly round on the on the actual scale, so we don't have to worry about that. Kind of sucks because it makes it more difficult to see the liner where the flat spot is, but I just hit it. I can, you can feel it when it drops in. So yeah, I'm going to take this guy, and I'm, I'm going to put a little downward pressure on the, on the female nut here and move this right there. She went, so that it slipped right in. It's in place, and you can see it's poking through this side. So we got one of them in place, and that's nice because now, um, now this is lined up, or it should be, if it's machined correctly, it should be lined up where it needs to be, and I just have to rotate this to find the flat spot, putting a little downward pressure until it slips in, and there she went. I could feel it, so it went in the liner, the scale of the liner, and poked right through the other side. So there we go. 
So far, this has been pretty straightforward. And let's get our other scale on this side. Slips right on. My female fasteners are on there. So there we go. And before I, whoops, that's what I was about to say, before stuff starts slipping out of place and all that kind of craziness, let's go ahead and get those male fasteners in there. And a lot of times what I'll do, because I, I don't like to over torque stuff at this stage, or I don't, well, you never want to over torque stuff. I don't want to put too much, you know, I'm just trying to get them, get them in place, get everything from, from falling out. I'll actually just take the bit out of the handle and just, just tighten with the bit. Um, cause I'm not interested in getting stuff super tight or final torque or anything like that on here. So put this guy in there. So honestly, honestly, we could stop right here. And I am considering it. I'm not going to lie. I like the orange collar. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two because we shouldn't need to mess with them anymore. And see, this is what I was talking about. Now, why did they do this? Uh, so the factory scales for the Benchmade... They are ambidextrous. You can put the clip on either side. The flytanium is not. This is beautiful. Look at that. Look at that show side. That is beautiful. I love it. It's only what you need there. You know, you may not think you need the lanyard hole there, but whatever. Um, it's only what you need. You know, you don't have these screws here. I'm sorry, lefties. I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not considering you, but why didn't they do that on this one? Why didn't they just stop and and leave leave the clip option out of here? Ah, I know I'm a righty, I'm selfish. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and see, this is the same thing. So I love this contrast side to side on this. And here, this has a really nice contrast between the uh, uh, bolster here and the scale. Um, let's just go ahead and take a look around it while we have this on because I and that, that'll help me decide if I want to do the colors or not. Everything fits on here real nicely. Um, in case you didn't know, uh, Flytanium's uh, butterfly scales, the Bali Song, Bali Song scales, those are made in the USA and they're pricey. Um, you're, look, you're looking at 150 or so bucks for these. Um, the, they're copper, brass, carbon fiber stuff for the other models. They are made in China. Um, I don't care. They're, they're beautiful. I, you know, and they're, they're reasonably priced. I mean, this kit was like 75 bucks, but you're getting both scales, the copper backspace or the copper collar uh, for the pivot. Um, I, I don't think that's a bad deal myself. Yes, they're made in China. Yes, this is a USA made knife. Yes, this is a Taiwan made knife. Um, a lot of people bitch about that though, and they say, oh, I'm not gonna put Chinese parts on my USA made knife. Well, I, you know, and I've actually got um, some knives that are out at a, um, a guy who does custom copper and brass work on one of the Facebook groups. He does beautiful, beautiful work. And I, I sent some knives to him that Flytanium and other people are not making these parts uh, for those knives. A uh, Hinderer Full Track, a Hinderer XM Slippy, a Lion Steel, one of their slip joints. It's the uh, shuffler I sent him. Um, and then I also sent in a Cold Steel 8015, uh, the Demco uh, Scorpion lock design. And, you know, that stuff's, it, it costs quite a bit. Um, you're, you're looking at about $100 for each one of those at least. Um, uh, so I think the Lion Seals were a little cheaper than that. But, you know, I, I really, I don't mind that these are made in China. They're well made. They look nice. Um, I don't care. So <laughs> that's, that's me. Um, I am going to go ahead, because I'm still not sure, I'm still debating, I'm going to go ahead and put the clip back on. Maybe if I'd done this live, I could have asked for your opinions. Whoever's watching this, all like two of you. And on the clips, um, I usually, whenever I do one of these type of videos, I'll tell you what I do with clips. I very, very lightly, like it's just like with the other screws, I just get them to where they're snug, um, and I back off just a little bit. So what I do with my clips is um, I take the clip and I move it all the way up, all the way in this direction towards the spine or the back of the handle. 
and then I hold it there. And I don't grind, you know, I don't torque on it. I just move it up for its for its amount of free movement that it has. And then I tighten. I typically do the middle screw first. Remember, I'm only using a thumb and two fingers here. And I'll, I'll tell you why I do that in just a second, in case you haven't seen my other videos. And this is kind of like a... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, i got to get a drink real quick. This is kind of like a... Uh, if you change a, a flat tire on your vehicle, um, you'll, you'll want to go back and kind of tighten again, because as you, as you torque these screws down... Um, this one maybe may have a little more room to be to move down again or to uh, get a little tighter um, as the other two screws are moved. So I'll, I'll typically go around about three times in, in order that I did them. I'll go back to the first one here. There we go. So now my clip's installed, and I, I guess that clip doesn't look too bad on there. Um, if I do go aftermarket, it will not be with a deep carry. I'm not a huge fan of deep carry clips in general, um, but I hate them. A lot of them, like, they, I don't know, they're just ugly. And a lot of them, like, extend up past the back of the knife. I just think they look terrible, and I just don't think they're necessary. Um, so I, I'm not, I have them on a few knives, but I'm not hugely fond of them. So there we have the factory clip back on, and the whole knife is assembled. Pivot. Slight side-to-side -side play there, uh, which would be from the factory because I haven't messed with the pivot. Um, but it's... it's oh, man, I think this looks awesome. Um, let's check out blade centering. Blade centering also, this one was a little better centered than the other one from the factory. And this one, uh, the other one I checked out at Bass Pro. And centering looks spot on on this guy. Very nice. Got a great action on it. Slight, I, you know, I might not even, I'd probably tighten that just a little bit if I were done with it, um, but there you go. I think that thing looks super, super sharp. And as this copper patinas, it's going to look even better. I'll tell you, though, it's a it's a chunk. It's It's got some serious heft to it now for such a small knife, uh, much more than it did with the uh, G10 and, and wood. This stuff is super light. Uh, this copper is not, so keep that in mind. So... I'll tell you what, let's go ahead, because all of this is reversible, you know, if I don't like it, I can um, change it back, and I'm not sure, I'm going to guess T10 on that pivot, I think that's a common one for Benchmade pivots, and look at that, perfect fit, T6 on the clip and body, and then a T10 on the pivot, So I'm just going to, now, I'll tell you what I might do here, because I really don't, the, the axis lock stuff can be a little tricky, because once you take this blade out, you know, getting getting everything like aligned and, and every, you've got uh, phosphor bronze washers sandwiched in here, you've got the omega springs and all this stuff, and it can start acting a little bit funky. So I think what I might do is let's take this so i'm taking just this straight bit here and i've done this stuff from time to time this is a 5 30 seconds bit and i wonder if this will fit in here and and just push the female i'm going to take let me take tension off of this with the axis lock i'm going to pull it back and i'm just going to try this so okay that pushed right out so what i did it there is i pushed the female pivot out with that so that should keep everything in place. Um, just make sure it doesn't fall out. Um, so that'll keep everything lined up there pretty well. Um, I have not done this, so I don't know how easily these collars come off. And like I said, I know this, this may go out of frame, it may go out of focus and whatnot. I'm sorry about that. Um, just trying to tap it and see what happens. Um, Dang it, I didn't even think about these things, so I didn't really bring anything to try and get them out, because I don't want to, like, pry on them and mar the uh, the color or the anodizing or anything off of them. Um, I think this might be a sign that I just want to keep the... And I'm still keeping pressure off that axis lock, too, that I just want to keep the orange ones, and I'm holding this up with my middle finger down here. And I'm trying to maybe get a grip... 
Uh, oh, there. Yeah, just a little bit of grip there. Popped it right out. Um, so I'm going to slap that guy. Oh, shoot, I do like that too. Ah, first world problems. So let's flip this over. And once I put, uh, once I release the axis lock, it pushes forward on the blade and it keeps this little, the bit in place. Um, so let's, I'm gonna take that back down so I can try and get access to the collar. So once I release that, it held it in place. I guess I should've been doing that on the other side. I'm just gonna take my fingernail and try and catch it like it did on the other side. And yep, it flipped right up. So that was pretty easy. I put my copper there. And now I'm going to release the axis bar again. And I'm going to get that back through. Okay. And now I'm going to take my, I'm sorry, that got off frame a little bit. I've got, I'm keeping pressure off the axis bar because if I put it on there, then it could potentially put tension on all this and make this more difficult. Um, so to make sure that this stuff kind of stays together, and let's just take a look real quick at this pivot screw. So you put tension on all that. So this is the pivot screw, which is nice because it's the same thing. It's got the flat spot. This only has one flat spot where the body screws had one on each side. So um, I want it going in on this side because I want all my, oh shoot, ah, ah, my bit slipped out. And you can see everything's kind of sliding around there right now. I think I'm still okay though. Um, I'm not exactly sure where the flat spot is here, so I'm going to stick this through, but my two phosphor bronze washers and my blade are now free to like move around, so this could be a little more difficult. Um, I'm going to take that, and like I said, I know this is probably going to go out of focus and all that, but I just don't have any choice right now. Okay. Uh, I'm rotating the pivot there I found the flat spot and you can feel it you're just putting a little bit of downward pressure and you can feel it so now I'm through the flat spot on the scale and I'm gonna move this a little bit um, just move the blade and the two washers are kind of moving as one unit right now um, I got I got okay so now I can see that the blade is moving but the the phosphor bronze washer on this side is not so I know I'm through the phosphor bronze washer now I got to get the hole in the blade lined up and I can kind of look through the other side here too and see. And what we can see here, I can see the edge of the phosphor bronze washer in there and the blade. So I'm going to move the blade a little bit until I can hopefully take axis bar pressure off. And I'm putting upward pressure on the, on the, uh, there we go. It snapped through the blade because I'm putting that upward pressure in there. My collar slipped off, but it's held in place by the screw. So now what's blocking me is the phosphor bronze washer. And what I'll do, I'm going to take one of my little flat heads, and we can see that here. And I'm kind of glad this happened. It didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked, but this will kind of show you what can happen if you're messing with an axis lock and maybe some, some tips to, to get it fixed, to get it going. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this flat head and kind of push and try and move. There we go. So I took this flat head and pulled the phosphor bronze washer back out of the way, and while still putting upward pressure on my female screw here, and that allowed it to pass through and it went through all the way. So now, now my screw is flush where it needs to be all the way through the knife. Both of my copper collars are in place. And so let's get this male pivot screw in place as well. And I'm gonna pull pressure off the axis bar so the blade can go free still. Be careful not to cut yourself if you do that. So I'm going to get that down. So that's obviously too tight because that sucker is tight, tight, tight. So then back it off just a little bit. So our pivot, um, you know, I'll have to tune that to, to get the action where I want it to eliminate the blade play I don't want to see um, and get the blade solid. Uh, right now, it feels like it's it's pretty much where I would want it to be. Um, I don't feel any blade play there. No, it will not drop. I don't I don't care about that. I don't mind doing this. Now, what I do like to see on my axis locks, and this is where I'll tune my axis locks, is once I like it to drop down 
on the force of the axis lock when it gets about there. So right now this is a little tighter than I would like. So I'll take that and loosen it until the spring tension of the axis lock will pop the blade back down. And that's where I want, that's where I like it to be. Because I don't feel, there's a very minimal amount of like blade flex here when it's like that, but I wouldn't call it blade play. Uh, we still have very good centering. Centering looks spot on on it. Flies open. Very little blade play. I might try and tighten it just a smidge. And then I'll probably, I don't like to do Loctite, but I may do some Teflon thread tape on here is what I like to use if my pivot uh, likes to come loose on me. So that's still got nice action. And then let's see. So when it gets about to there, push down, and there, the axis lock took it the rest of the way. So, wow. Um, okay, I'm glad I put the copper uh, pivot collars on there. That looks pretty damn sharp. I am very, very pleased with that. Um, so I, I think I'll probably keep that on there. Wow. God, what an upgrade. This is so cool. So here are the two knives that we did, the Spyderco Techno 2 and the Benchmade... Um, uh, Crooked River Mini. Uh, the Flytanium does not have the kit, the kits for the full size uh, Crooked River, at least at the time I made this video. But man, if you put copper on one of those full size Crooked Rivers, whew, that is going to add some heft. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, both these were very straightforward. Um, as you can probably tell, the, uh, well, I mean, it should have been really obvious. The, uh, Spider Co. was way easier with the frame lock to do all that. But really, the Crooked River, you didn't have to fully disassemble it. It really wasn't that bad. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's a pretty straightforward upgrade. And man, I, in my opinion, it was worth it. Those are two sharp knives, if I do say so. All right. Thanks for watching.